Welcome to our Collins Cup captain's picks. The Collins Cup is just 17 days away now. We already have the automatic qualifiers locked in, but there's still six men and six women yet to be announced. The captain's picks. That's right. We're about to speak to the captains and find out who they've chosen for their wild cards to represent their team at the Collins Cup. So, the PTO Collins Cup is in just 17 days and promises to be a spectacle like nothing we have ever seen in triathlon before. The very best athletes will be the likes of Jan Frodeno, Daniela Reef, Lionel Sanders and Lucy Charles Barkley. They'll race a match race format over a middle distance course hosted at the Exponic Sphere in San Marino, Slovakia on the 28th of August. That's right, over 12 race matches pitting the best of the best from Europe, the USA and an international team against each other. Points will be scored towards a team total and the crowning of the PTO Collins Cup champions. Yeah, and the first four athletes on each team have already been selected based on the PTO world rankings. But joining those automatic qualifiers, we have four additional wild card spots, two men and two women for each team. And they can be any PTO pro triathlete. So the list of potential athletes really is quite incredible and quite long. Olympic champions, Ironman and Ironman 70.3 champions, and even previous world champions. Yeah, so without further ado, let's hop on a call and speak to the Collins Cup captains and find out who they picked. Thanks for joining us, uh, captains for Team Europe for the Collins Cup. Two times Ironman world champion Norman Stedler and six times Ironman world champion Natasha Badman. So you guys are the team captains for the Collins Cup and it's captain's picks day. So we're very excited to find out who you guys have chosen to represent your team. Obviously, we already know uh, that you guys have a pretty strong lineup on the team Europe uh, with uh, Daniela Reef, Annie Haug, Lucy Charles Barkley and Holly Lawrence on the women's side and Jan Fredino, Gustav Eden, Joe Skipper and Patrick Langer on the men's side. So how do you make that team even stronger? Thank you. It's definitely not an easy decision. There are so many strong athletes and Norman and I, we said that the best thing would be to have two teams. Of, of course. Uh... In the end, uh, we, we both could start and we win, so it's a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, should we yeah. start with the women's wildcard captain's picks? So, the women's captain's picks are Kat on the, on the first position, and on the second position it's Emma. So that's Kat Matthews, who was uh, second at Ironman Tulsa, and Emma Pallant, who had just won Ironman 70.3 Bol Bol uh, Boulder this weekend. Fantastic, and Kat also, obviously that phenomenal run performance. Yeah, woo! So, yeah, congratulations <laughs> to those guys. So impressive. Now, Norman, over to you then, for the men's. So, I picked uh, Daniel Bickegaard. Ah. And uh, the next one is uh, Sebastian Kindle. Well, <laughs> brilliant. Well, well. Sebastian Kindle, previous 70.3 world champion. You can't go wrong with a selection like that. Uh, and Daniel Bakugard, who uh, won Ironman 70.3 Dubai earlier this year with a fantastic 1.10 run split. So certainly a man who's going to be hard to beat. In fact, I can't really see anyone in the European team that's going to be easy to beat. It's an absolute powerhouse on the bike as well, that team. Um, you, yeah, I mean, it's going to be tough for the other teams facing that. Can you guys see any threats coming from the other teams? Who are you, who you watching out for uh, from Team USA or Team International? I think they're going to do everything possible to beat or mix it up. So probably they have some strategies <laughs> that they don't tell us now to, uh, yeah, to change the game. And yeah, no, you know we have six races, so uh, it's, it's so open and you, like Santasha said, you don't know who is ra racing against each other and uh, Lots of tactics and, uh, you know, one flat tire, you know, I know it, how, <laughs> how it works with a flat tire and everything uh, and uh, the, the time gaps and the point, the point system and the last race could, yeah, could be the most important race uh, of the Collins Cup. In Switzerland, we have a saying 
that that um, I try to translate it that says uh, don't eat the chicken before you catch it. <laughs> so this race is absolutely not done. Uh, so many things can happen. And as you know, uh, you all raced and uh, it's never done by just on the paper. Well, we are really excited to see how they stack up against the other teams. So thank you ever so much for today. And what an exciting pick. Yeah, we'll leave it there with the don't eat the chicken before you catch it. Wow. What a team, James. Yeah, I, honestly, I can't see anyone beating the European team. I mean, the automatic qualifiers are already stacked. They've got Daniel Reef, they've got Annie Haug, they've got Jan Fredino, they've got Gustav Eden, and that's just their first two choices on the men and the women. And then the automatic qualifiers, they've basically just gone down the next couple steps in the ranking. So on the women's side, they've got fifth ranked and then sixth ranked, which is Emma Palance and then Kat Matthews in their team. And fifth ranked on the men's, Daniel Backergaard. The only way place they uh, kind of deviate from that ranking list is with Seb Keenly, who is ranked a paltry 19th in the world. He's only 10th in the Such European team. Such a wild team. card a spot. A wild card, but Seb Keenly. He's an Ironman world champion, 70.3 world champion. I mean, how many Ironman 70.3s has he won? He's not really a wild card. He's not a crazy pick, is he? Yeah, I would never bet against Sebastian Keenly, that's for sure. I mean, very exciting. And I'm really excited to see the likes of Kat Matthews pulled in after some really impressive performances of late at Ironman UK and also obviously her run at Ironman Tulsa that turned a lot of heads. Um, and she's a powerful athlete. Yep, I think uh, Team Europe is definitely the team to beat. So let's uh, go to the other captains and find out how they plan to beat them and who they've picked to beat this team, uh, starting with the internationals. Well, hello, Lisa. We are joined by Lisa Bentley, 11-time Ironman winner. Unfortunately, Simon Whitfield couldn't be with us today uh, because he's off in the wilderness, apparently, somewhere and unable to get on the Wi-Fi. Um, now, we are delighted to already know the, the automatic qualifiers for the Collins Cup. So, for the women, we've got... Teresa Adam, Paula Finley, Carrie Lester, and Jeannie Metzler. And then on the men's side, we've got Lionel Sanders, Braden Curry, Sam Appleton, and Max Newman. But the bit we're here for today is to get the captain's picks, Lisa. So, over to you. Yes, well, Simon and I, as, long, as well as Craig Alexander, uh, we've been chatting on and off for the last several months, looking at who was in the running and who we wanted and who, who we were kind of cheering for without cheering uh, because we thought they'd be great people for the team. And one thing we agreed on is we wanted some speed. We wanted someone who could race well at the 70.3 distance in particular. Uh, if they were doing ITU, that would be brilliant as well. So some things that came to mind were athletes like Henry Skoman. That was one that came up. Uh, we, you know, we wanted Flora Duffy. We wanted that kind of, uh, that kind of strength. Flora is so strong. Of course, she just won the Olympic gold, and she is unavailable. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and, and uh, Henry Skolman, with his background in speedy Olympic distance as well as 70.3, he'd be a great add-on as well. But he has injury at the moment. So, but uh, we had others. There's a lot of talented athletes out there. So starting with our women, we're really excited to have Ellie Salthouse on the team. We've been watching her for the past year and a bit, actually, because she did do some races in 2020 where ever, so many people couldn't race. And she's pretty much undefeated over 70.3. She won in Andorra. She won Challenge Shepparton. She won um, in Geelong. She's got a great swim, bike, run combination. You never can be bet against an Aussie. They're always really strong. They always find a way to win. Yeah, uh, she pick. won one of my favorite races, Hell of the West, which is a really hard, hard race. Uh, really gritty in Australia. I raced it a couple of times when I was in Australia uh, training. Uh, so she just has consistency and speed. So really happy to have Ellie on the team. And we also have Sarah Crowley, who is actually our fifth qualifier. So we had the top four and then Sarah Crowley was fifth. Uh, again, has a ton of depth in the sport. Uh, wins, you know, really well known for her wins at Ironman. Uh, but she also has 
you know, started the sport as Olympic distance athlete and has had success there and has some success in the 70.3. But again, really hard worker, gritty, a great uh, swim bike run across all three. You don't come in third in Hawaii without being good at all three. Yeah, excellent picks. And yeah, we're excited to see them racing. As you say, they're ranked uh, fifth and sixth uh, on, on the international team. So mm, fairly easy picks for, for someone to predict there. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, like you say, you couldn't get uh, Flora Duffy. That would have been, that would have been great, but uh, otherwise engaged for obvious reasons. Okay, that's that's very <laughs> exciting. And we look forward to them going up against the, the uh, Americans and the, and the Europeans. So who have you picked on the on the men's side? Uh, Canadian maybe? Now for the men, we uh, we had a Canadian that has been racing like crazy in Canada. We were pretty locked down during the the whole COVID, which is still ongoing. But we were really locked down basically in Ontario, where Jackson Laundry, our pick, our captain's pick, where he lives. Uh, we were locked down pretty much from October 2020 until May or June 2021. Uh, pools were closed, couldn't get a haircut. You couldn't do anything. It was really shut down here. And Jackson found a way to race, which meant he had to leave Canada and go to a bunch of races and then come back to Canada and quarantine for 14 days every single time he did that. So he was an athlete who wanted to qualify for the Collins Cup. and. Simon, Craig, and I, we were really cognizant of that. We were really aware of that effort. That's the kind of people we want on the team. We want you to be fast, but we want you to have that work ethic. We want you to be dedicated, throwing two feet into the ring for Collins Cup. And Jackson, he won in Ecuador, the Ecuador 70.3. Basically every race, he got faster and faster. So he put it out there. He went to these races, even though he had to quarantine 14 days. He went to Texas, came in 12th, was disappointed. He had a bit of bike problems, but he ran a 110 half marathon. So our radar went up as soon as he, he ran that 110. And again, the sacrifice to go to a race. Then he turns that around and goes to Ironman 70.3 Florida, comes in fourth. So that's the true Jackson that we know. Then fifth in St. George, brilliant field, great race. Uh, third in De Des Moines, and then he capped it off with that win in Ecuador. So again, coming from a lockdown country and competing in six races in 2020 is uh, dedication, which is what we want. And he's fast. He's got, a, he's got a great swim, bike, run combination. So really pleased to have Jackson Laundry from Canada on the team. And really happy to add uh, Kyle Smith from New Zealand to our team. We were watching him uh, ever since New Zealand came on the radar. When New Zealand happened, we, and we looked at his 2019 results as well. He won Challenge Wanaka half, which is a challenging half. He won the Port of Taranga half. And he was third at Ironman New Zealand uh, with a great race. He's a, he's a great swimmer and a great biker and a great runner, but he really has a great swim, which is going to be important. We want to have some really good head to head battles and we'll be taking that into account when we do all the matchups. And then he was just fifth in Elsinore uh, and Kyle Smith, you know, he's he's got a lot of heart and we know he's got a lot of talent and, and I don't think he has a lot of sponsors. And so he's really doing this for the love of the sport and 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 we're really happy that we're going to put him on the Collins Cup stage because this could, you know, this is what the PTO is all about. It's about the athletes. It's about giving them a chance. And I know as a former athlete, when I was like going up the ladder trying to be successful, nobody's throwing plane tickets at you and free hotel rooms and appearance fees. They start throwing that to you after you've won, you know, five Ironmans. Well, by the time you've won five Ironmans, you don't need the hotel rooms. You don't need the appearances. Of course, you always want it. But you know who needs it is the athletes that are just starting. And it feels like the Collins Cup is giving that opportunity to so many athletes. And um, and Kyle Smith really speaks to that. I mean, all of our athletes are, speak to that because everyone can use that break to be on this grand stage to have the publicity. But I, I really love that Kyle Smith is going to be on the team. He's got what we need. He's got the speed. He's been racing. He's been in New Zealand. He's locked down as well. Um, but he has shown grit, determination, tenacity, and that's what we want. We want someone who's hungry to race 
and where the Collins Cup is the pinnacle of their year. That's what we want, and we have it with our four captain's picks. We're pretty excited. Awesome. Well, thanks ever so much. I mean, I was already very excited about the Collins Cup, and I think just now you've made me even more excited, uh, particularly talking about <laughs> Kyle Smith. Um, obviously, he's been on our radar, but actually you just highlighting um, he's, you know, a very furious head-to-head -head racer when he's put in that kind of situation. So um, thank you ever so much for today, and we will see you in Samarin. Thanks for that, Lisa Bentley. Uh, pretty Simon Whitfield wasn't on the call there. It'd be nice to chat to him, but I guess we'll see him at, uh, at Samarin. He's somewhere in the wilderness without Wi-Fi at the moment. Uh, Sarah Crowley, fifth in the ranking, so easy pick there. Sally Saltar, sixth in the ranking. Oh, again, easy pick. They both had quite a lot of success over the 70.3 distance, especially Ellie with, uh, I think, three wins from her last three 70.3 starts. And I, I definitely remember some seasons where she almost seemed unbeaten over that distance. So I'm almost amazed she's not higher in the ranking. So definitely obvious choices to pick. Yeah, and then on the men's side, they've uh, sixth ranked and seventh ranked in the in the international team. So they've skipped over Tyler Butterfield. We're not sure why, maybe not available, maybe injured, but still strong picks. Jackson Laundry, he's a uh, first in 70.3 Ecuador not long ago, so uh, he's in good form. And also ripped everyone's legs off on Zwift in the off season. Including mine during lockdown and some Zwift pro racing. Definitely a powerhouse on the bike, so, and he can run off it, so he's a man to watch. And then Carl Smith, a young gun, he's only 23 years old, so uh, getting some experience on the big stage and certainly, you know, these young guns come in with uh, all guns blazing and he might upset some people. Yeah, he definitely has already. He's taken a few quite impressive scouts, the likes of Braden Curry and, and the likes. So yeah, very excited to see them. Now for the final team to see what Team USA have got and what they're bringing to this fight. Okay, we've uh, now heard from uh, the European captains and the international captains who their captain picked Pixar. And now we're joined on the line by none other than Mark Allen and Karen Smyers, who both really don't need any introduction, our USA team captains. So the USA auto qualifiers are Scar Munch, Heather Jackson, Jackie Herring, and Chelsea Sodaro for the women. And then on the men's side, we have Sam Long, Rudy Bomberg, Matt Hansen, and Ben Canute. So all that's left to do now is find out who those last two spots for the women and last two spots for the men are. And for that, we're gonna start with Mark. Can you tell us who you picked? Yeah, for me, it was a pretty clear pick. Um, you know, Chris Lieferman and, and Justin Metzler, they both have shown super good potential. They're, they're guys that are fired up. They <clears throat> Justin, uh, when he heard that he's going to be uh, on the team, he just went ballistic. So that's the kind of enthusiasm that, that as a coach I want to see, because that's also going to be what elevates those guys to surprise levels of performance at the Collins Cup. So I can't wait for that. And then um, Andrew Starkowitz is going to be our alternate, just so you know. And uh, he's, he's also one of those guys that um, whether he wins or not, he's going to entertain the universe. and throw the monkey wrench in, in, into the race on the bike ride if he is one of the ones who ends up competing and as we all know you know getting to the race could be challenging for some athletes but hopefully all of our picks will show up and uh, it's going to be exciting. Yeah Chris Lieferman and uh, uh, Justin Metzler both very good picks and yeah we actually mentioned Andrew Starkovitz has been a uh, pretty interesting competitor so if he does get there certainly you guys uh, won't be a uh, Handicapped in any way, definitely entertaining to watch. Okay, Karen, you're gonna tell us uh, who you picked for the women. Yeah, we are super excited that um, we were able to uh, get commitments from Katie Zafaris and Taylor Nib, our Olympians um, that many of you got to see probably the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, silver medalists. And um, Taylor, uh, kind of surprised everybody by showing up at Boulder 70.3 on the final weekend of qualifying and finished second um, ahead of all the other U.S. competitors and um, just showed that she has huge potential at the long distance as well as um, at the short distance. So super excited to have her um, competing at the Collins Cup. And uh, Katie Zafaris has, um, has shown her, you know, talent across the board. Um, has shown that she's um, gotten uh, fitter and fitter, got a bronze medal at the Olympics and um, has raced long distance a little bit before. So we know that she um, can rise to the occasion. 
So um, definitely a little bit different uh, than what we did with the men's, um, but I think it really raises the uh, potential of the U.S. team um, at the Collins Cup. That is very exciting. You're definitely bringing a lot of speed to the game here. So um, I'm actually very interested here. Obviously, they were, I'd imagine, quite last minute picks after the Olympic results. But Taylor Nib, obviously, after the second at 70.3 Boulder, was that a very last minute decision um, to pull her in? And actually, I must add, she did that on a road bike, I believe. Yeah. Is that right? So That's even more right. impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you know, she showed what a, a good biker she was at the Olympics, right? So um, I wasn't completely, uh, you know, surprised to see that come out of her in Boulder. Um, but we knew that we had to be waiting till the final weekend on the women's side because we also had three women that had been on maternity leave that had shown they could be at the top of the rankings if they could get back in 2021 and show their fitness. So. Um, we had three other women that we were watching closely at that race and knew that the everything could be, you know, decided at the last minute. So we were sort of prepared to make a last minute decision anyway. And, um, you know, Chelsea earned her way onto the automatic um, selections at that race as well. Um, so, yeah, everything was a little bit up in the air and, um, you know, we weren't sure that the Olympians would be able to fit it in their schedule, but i um, super excited that they um, both agreed to do so. Yeah, it sounds like it's all worked out really well for the US team and definitely throwing a bit of a cat among the pigeons there with the uh, the really fast Olympic girls. We look forward to them uh, giving the, the long course girls a bit of a run for their money at the Collins Cup in a couple of weeks. We'll see you guys there. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, I have to say, I, I didn't actually see some of those names coming. No, I mean, they've gone for proper wild cards on the American team. Uh, you know, they, they've got a pretty strong automatic qualifying team. Very strong. Yeah, so uh, they're definitely a team to watch. But uh, Mark Allen and Karen Smyers, they're really going for some wild cards. And they're confident. Yeah, they are. Uh, the short course girls, uh, that's what we were hoping for, to be honest, to see some captain's picks from the short course and see how they mix it up over a slightly shorter than a 70.3 distance race, I think they might uh, turn some heads and, and give a good fight. But Katie Zaveris, unranked on the PTO rankings, well not in the top 100 anyway, but of course bronze medal at the Olympics and world champion in 2019 on the WTCS series. So definitely one to watch. Taylor Nib, even more of a wild card. She's got herself on the rankings, but only last weekend with her second place at 70.3 Boulder. Certainly can ride a bike. She was riding a and that mixed team relay at Tokyo, she just rode Cassandra Bogrand off her wheel. Yeah, wasn't that fun to watch. Maybe we'll see some more of that happening yeah. uh, at the Collins Cup. On the men's side, Chris Lieferman, pretty easy decision. He's done pretty well lately. He's uh, ranked fifth in their, in their ranking, so he's basically the next one down the list. And then a real wild card, because uh, Justin Mensler's only ranked 54th in the world, and he's 11th down their list. They've skipped over quite a few big names. As we heard Mark saying, they put Starkwitz in as their alternate or their reserve, uh, and perhaps he'll end up there depending with COVID travel and stuff. Certainly he'd be interesting. But I think Justin Metzler might uh, surprise a few people too. Well, yeah, he, he has had some impressive performances. A second at Ironman Coeur d'Alene. So he's certainly an athlete that's coming through. And I know, as Marcus said, he is stoked to be here racing. So he may just step it up. And his better half is racing for the international team too. So uh, he's got that support there with him. So yeah, interesting picks. We're very excited for this. Uh, just 17 days to go. Yes, so make sure you tune in on the 28th of August to watch all this action unfold. Obviously, we know the athletes that have been selected and who is racing. But we don't know who's racing who yet, because obviously they've got to be drawn against each other. And that'll happen in a live draft a few days before the event, which you can watch on the PTO Hub or a broadcaster near you. Uh, we'll be covering it. We'll be in Samarin, and we're looking forward to that very much. If you're still not sure what the Collins Cup is, you can check out our video link down below. What is the Collins Cup? Yeah, if you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe down below.